Welcome to a brand new Kendo Tips video. My name is Jose, I'm a Yondang in Kendo, and this video is kind of long, so I'm just going to be very quick. What I did for this video is that I edited one of my last streams where I broke down the different elements of small men. And I just wanted to let you know that to make it easier for you to either skip to different sections, come back, or just find different elements that you're interested about, I will leave a defined timeline down below so you can just go to whichever section you find interesting. The reason why this video is kind of long is because there were a lot of things said during the stream that I share, that some other people share, that I thought that were really interesting. So it was kind of hard finding out the things to leave out, but hopefully making that timeline will make it easier for you to find what you're looking for, what you need. And if you have any questions or you have something to add, if you feel like I forgot anything, you can leave it down in the comments below or pass by my streams Sundays at 3.30 p.m. where you can come share your thoughts, ask questions. We can talk about Kendo, we can watch Kendo together. Overall, it's overall a good time. I do those Sundays at 3.30 p.m. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit that notification bell so you know when I go live or post new videos. And if you do enjoy the content of this video, please hit the thumbs up. Let me know that you enjoy the video. Let me also know the thoughts of what you think about this type of videos. Do you enjoy them? Should I do something else? A balance, let me know. In the meantime, please enjoy the video and stay safe. Today, I got an idea. Somebody made the recommendation to make a video about breaking down the elements of small men. And I thought, okay, that's actually a very good idea for a video. And I thought like, wait, why am I doing it on my own? I probably should do it in the stream with everybody. So what I wanted to do today, I wanna break down a basics, a Kihon video that I found from Teramoto Sensei break down the elements on small men and you will not only hopefully get my opinion or my what I've been taught when it comes to small men but you can also give me your thoughts and share with everybody up in YouTube so I think that that will be interesting I guess we should define small men for me small men it's any man that doesn't go over and I'm being very generic but small men I guess will be a man that doesn't make such a big swing that it goes past the end point. Maybe it can go a little bit, but I guess because of the impact is uh, due to the tenouchi mostly, not necessarily for the swing of the arms. I think I would say that I'm safe to say that small man, it's a man that doesn't go over. I guess we could say you have small men, medium men, and, and, and uh, like make it like a Starbucks thing, right? Like grande, tall, and venti, whatever. If Starbucks ran a dojo, I think I think that will be the the definition, right? You imagine that? I think it's small and and, and 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 big men. That's it for me, at least. Again, that's personal thought. That is that's how I've been taught. And I chose Tenamoto for this uh, specific breakdown. The reason for that is because not only I think he he has a great technique, a great approach. It's like very straightforward. He comes very straightforward. I enjoy it. And of course, you guys know I'm biased towards uh, Osaka police, so of course I had to do that. Okay, so let's watch it. Let's watch the whole uh, approach first. I like to, when I, I like to break down any waza, I like to start first with the bottom, with the feet. And the reason for that is because I feel that, especially with small techniques, you have to create power with your whole body and it all starts with the ground. So the momentum starts being built up as soon as he starts taking the step. He takes one step forward creates momentum and then pushes with the left leg again to go for the men. Now, not every dojo necessarily trains like this. I know that they go one step and then men. Some dojos do men straight up from, from one position. This is how they train in the Osaka police. I'm not saying you have to do it like that, but I'm saying that's how they do it. 
left leg, as soon as he takes the first step forward, he brings the left leg down, look, and then he starts pushing immediately with it. I made a video on Fumikiri, which is that push with the left leg, uh, right at, you know, towards the end to push your body forward. And I think that's essential to create stability and to create power to go through and to actually execute a good timing. A lot of people at the beginning specifically when they want to do a small wasa, they just kind of throw their hands. So you see that it's very weak or it doesn't have very good impact. I think most of it is because their body's not coming in with it and engaging the left leg like this. Right after the first momentum step, you're gonna see that the left leg, I'll pause it right there, right at that moment. See, left leg pushes, and then right here, he re-engages the leg. Now, mind you, the hands have not really gone up to start the swing. He is pushing a little bit forward to create that connection, to keep that connection with the opponent, but he hasn't lifted the shinai yet. He hasn't really done the push with the left hand. At this point, at least this is the way that I, I, I feel it and I train it, is that at this point, I'm trying to create the connection between the left leg and my core to keep all this steady. A lot of times I see that people, whenever they don't have that stability on their core, their back or their like the upper body kind of like drags back and you want to avoid that. You want to make sure that you come in forward and you push through with the left leg and you keep the body going straight forward. It also makes it a lot harder to predict when he's keeping the body so straight forward towards the opponent. The hands, although they're engaged, they're pushing forward, they haven't really gone to the upswing. Okay. That so far take, takes care of pushing in and- Keep your hands to yourself. Keeping your hands to yourself, I think it's essential because again, some people tend to get angsty or try to reach over the, um, the opponent with their hands before they haven't really engaged their body. And I think it's very important to make sure that that's one of the last things that happen for a couple of reasons. If you start pushing your hand, especially your left hand and bring the tip up, then you make yourself an opening for kote. It makes it easier for the person to get the kote. Number two, when you're coming in with your body and then you leave the hands for the end, for the last thing to do, you are adding speed to your to yourself right because you're adding the speed that you have the momentum that you have with your body then you add the momentum with the speed because you never stop the momentum right uh it's like it's like throwing something out of the car that it's going to go f you know forward for a little bit right obviously the car is a whole different example but that, i guess hopefully you understand the analogy you want to create you want to add speed let's talk a little bit about the hands and what's happening with the hands Tobias, yes, that's one of the things that uh, I, I mean to say when keeping your hands to yourself. At this point, the hands are keeping the center, are making the distance with the opponent, but they haven't really been engaged yet. Right now, it's only footwork. So the left leg starts engaging right after, and at this point is when the left leg, the left hand starts pushing forward to create the momentum, to raise the tip, and then at this point right here, there's a maximum, uh, like the maximum angle that he will do. He starts pulling the left hand and the right hand, I think is very important, is not pushing forward. It's following the shinai, it's going along for the ride, but it's not putting especially pressure down, right? He's just throwing it forward. And then with Tenuchi, he snaps at the end, makes a sharp stop, and the left hand, of course, also does the tenochi, and that creates the th that impact here. And if you see, he's not engaging his hands; he's keeping the center, keeping the distance. Pushes with the left, pulls with the left, snaps with the tenochi at the end. When you're coming down here, the tenochi on the left hand happens slightly before the one on the on the right. On here, when you push for the left and then you pull. Same thing. It's, it's the tenochi starts with the left slightly before, but they both end at the same time. Okay, so it's a push and a pull. One last thing that I want to make sure that I that I point out. So obviously the right arm goes up slightly, right? One thing that 
I think we should avoid, unless like there's some certain occasions that's different, like Katsugi, right? But the 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 right arm should not be pulling the sword up. In the kamae, in the in the way that he approaches, you will see that he is coming in with the right arm pretty much as if it's in kamae and the right arm follows the shinai. It doesn't pull the shinai back to pull to them. It doesn't pull back to push forward, right? If you look at the right arm as he goes forward, he's using the left hand. The right arm is not pulling. Of course, there's a little bit of a bend of the elbow, but the main thing is that he's not pulling. If you see here, frame by frame, the right arm is following the same kamai. He's going forward and then there's a slight bend of the elbow, but he's not pulling, right? He's adapting to where the Shinai is. Pokemon, you're saying also pivoting using the right wrist. Yes, from here, there's what that pivot uh, that you're talking about, Pokemon, right? That's, that's what you're referring to. You use the right hand as a fulcrum. To go up, it pivots on the right arm. Right on the right hand, and then to come to come down, uh, it's same thing. I'm 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 exaggerating here, but you know it's I'm using the right arm, the right hand as a, as a pivot, using my left hand pulling. So from here specifically, you know he's pulling and creating that that extra speed with that tenochi, and then at the end, especially the right one with that tenochi, creates that that strong snap and the strong stop. So let's watch from all the different angles. There's another thing that I wanna break down as well. And it's a little bit of the timing of when things happen and you know how they compare with other parts of the body. Ideally, you want to have the impact being at the same time as the Fumikomi, right? Or that, that's, that's where we're taught. If you notice here, the strike comes in and then the Fumikomi comes down, right? Now, there's something very interesting. I don't know if anybody has heard this before. I don't know if anybody uh, see it this way. This is something that I was told, and if you, you know, if you let me know what you think about this. The, f the contact he's making here, a lot of times people make the target to be down here, right? That you wanna cut all the way down here. So if, you, if, you're, if your target is right here, you're tapping. You want to imagine that you're cutting into the person, right? So uh, what I was told is that Fumikomi, Fumikomi tends to happen are where the target it's at. Right, because you're aiming for here, so your timing with your footwork is here, and what that does, it actually creates more power as you're coming in, because you're not aiming to tap here, you're aiming to strike into the opponent as, as you're coming in. That's one timing point that, that I don't know what you guys, how you guys see it, but that's some of the things that I've been told about. Now, the other point, it's when to throw, when to do that, that whole push pull with the left hand. I'm gonna go frame by frame. So he goes first in, he engages or he anchors or he braces the left leg to start pushing. At this point, upper hands are not engaged yet. They start engaging at that moment when there is that extra push, when that fumikiri, if you wanna, if you wanna use that word right now, when that fumikiri starts taking action. So it's kind of like the very last section of the left leg obviously it depends on distance as well, right? But you want to engage your whole body. You want to start building up the tension from the bottom into your core, into your lats, into your shoulders, into your arms, and explode at the very last moment, right? And at this point, all the muscles should be engaged, except the Fumikomi. He, he engaged the upper part of the leg to bring up the leg, but the only part that like right now will be, I guess, the below the leg, the behind the, like the hamstr hamstrings and, and, and so on. They're not engaged yet because he's keeping that relaxed until the very last moment, that's right here. And at this moment, when he starts engaging for that Fumikomi is when the left hand should start making that Tenochi part at the end. You want to keep your upper body relaxed until that moment, that timing when you're pushing with the left leg and to go forward. Maybe we should break down uh, some of the muscle engagement here, 
right at this point, the beginning of the motion, when he engages the left leg, the whole leg is being engaged, okay? A lot of people think that just when you're in Kamai, you should just engage, engage the calf, and I don't think so. I think your, your whole leg is engaged, uh, your glutes and your core is engaged to come forward. I think from here, from the dough and above, everything's trying to be relaxed. At this point, again, the right leg is engaging in order to throw the knee forward, to push, push the knee forward. Now, here is when we start seeing that push with the left hand and the right arm starting to lift. So again, we're not lifting with our bicep, we're actually using more of, of our shoulder, kind of like we're following the shinai, and we're actually keeping the joint very relaxed because at the end we're going to throw the power, kind of like a whip, I guess would be a way to, to see it. And then at this point, after he pushed with the left leg, here at this point, when the fumikomi starts coming down, that's when he starts engaging, or I guess we can call it pulling the trigger, right? Like he's pulling the trigger maybe. Uh, that's when I feel that, for me at least, the left leg has already executed all his motion. I, I'm engaging my lats, I'm engaging my core. At the next point, when the fumikomi starts going down, is when I start engaging my uh, tenouchi. Let's watch it from different angles. He engages left leg, does the step, engages the left leg. At this point, he starts engaging the left hand. And right here, he starts engaging, he pulls the trigger. He pulls the sword, this, this arm, it's not pushing, it's following the shinai, right? It's being used as a pivot. Now, at this point, obviously, both Tenouchi have happened and the, the Fumikomi comes down, obviously, because he had... Oh, and this is another point. You don't want to fight the impossible. You don't want to fight down into the, into the man. So after the impact, he's relaxing his hands, he's relaxing his wrist, and that's why the tip goes up, okay? He's not pulling it up. He's not bringing the hands out from the target. He is allowing the natural bounce and then keeping his hands towards his opponent so he can go through, okay? Tobias, so the Tenouchi is letting the Shinai bounce back from the man. Yeah, because you do Tenouchi, but then you relax, right? And the reason you relax is not so the Shinai bounces up. It's so you can be ready to do another Waza. That's, that's the main reason why you want to relax. Because if you're tense, then there's no way. You're going to have to use your biceps to bring the, the sword back and down, right? Your, your biceps and maybe, yeah, maybe your, your left hand. But if you have that relaxation, you can actually get multiple hits with your arms extended. So, like Kotemen, exactly, Tobias, like Kotemen. You can have a good extension and then go into the Waza by having uh, that. So whenever he does a Tenouchi, right? Well, for Kotemen, you can do Kotemen with, and that was like one for me coming, right? But you can do Kotemen and then with extension. But if your wrists are tight, then that's what you see people do that type of motion, right? Where they hit and they hit like this, where obviously this is more effective, right? So pop, pop. Instead of pop, pop. Engage your core and keep your body solid going forward to your opponent, towards your opponent, instead of kind of letting your body just drag behind. Start with your, with your feet, not with your hands. Keep your hands to yourself to the very last second, to that moment when you start engaging the left hand. And the right arm, the right hand, does not pull or push the shinai. It follows the path of the shinai and then stops it at the end. Then you're saying that your kotemen became kotetsuki on your senpai one time because you didn't move the shinai up fast enough as your senpai was stepping to you for men. And that's one of the reasons too that you want to be able to get that wrist, uh, that wrist 
proficiency maybe is a good word to say when it comes to that because you want to make sure that you're you're sharp and you don't take away the time because this is slower than than this right so doing this with this small motion right here so with this small motion i can bring the tip all the way from here i can bring it back up with this small motion but to bring the tip up with your arms you have to do all this and yes you're creating a little bit of distance but in that time that person can come to you so that's why i feel that it's very important to learn that that execution now one more thing that i think is crucial when it comes to executing kote man man or any waza is to keep your hands behind the shinai if you put them to the side you're not going to be able to create power to create a good impact and a solid approach towards your opponent. I like to think kind of keeping my palms towards my opponent because if I do this, then it's it's harder for me to, to actually go towards my opponent. If you notice, and, and we did a little bit of a breakdown when, when Teramoto Sensei was doing uh, the men, that he brings the tip pretty much to the ceiling, right? Like he pretty much points the tip up. There is different degrees of how big we can do and how small. And the trick, or it's not a trick, and the secret to that, to get a good impact, is using your whole body and using your wrist with the tenoch. Oh, Jan, your question is, do you think that it's worth dividing small men into multiple categories, or is there only one small man? I think it's, I, I don't think there's a benefit of complicating the whole thing about making different categories of small men. I don't see the benefit or how can we improve our kendo by knowing more names of the same thing. Because for example, you can have a small man that is more compact than another, but the motions, the basic motions is the same. It's not like, it's not such a big difference as if, if it was, for example, like men and Sayu men, right? That there's, there I feel that there's a big difference, but when it comes to small men, Quick little recap, quick little things about this whole breakdown of small men. You have to engage your left leg. You have to push in your left leg, keeping your body straight and creating momentum. Use more than your calf. Use your whole leg. Engage the left hand by pushing. And then at the moment when you start engaging the fumikomi, pulling to bring down the tip and the tenouchi starts with the left hand, but they end at the same time left and right. And then after, they relax, so you're ready for the next technique. Oh, okay, I, I'm going to watch this one. Now, uh, let's watch the, second, the next replay. Okay, let me do a frame by frame. So here, he comes in a little bit, maybe he was thinking that Maybe he was gonna go for for men, and he was gonna try to do a kashido. I don't know. He comes in in a very defensive way, right? He adjusts. He puts his hands towards his opponent, a little bit more like a katsugi in in this position right here, and then he allows the the, the shina to start going forward, following with the right arm, and then at this point he pulls the trigger. So ends up being like a small man, just starting from the katsugi position. So he's pulling with the left hand, he is following the shinai, he's not necessarily pushing uh, down with the shinai, maybe he's pushing forward because he was coming from this position, so he had to like, but he's using his shoulder, right? He's, he's creating the downward motion with the left hand. I think that's what makes it good, that's what, I guess that's what caught my eye on it. So he's coming in forward, he's putting the pressure. You see, like, a lot of times, you see this very common bringing down the tip, bringing down the sword, threading down, so there's an opening up. Uh, obviously, he kind of it gets desperate, he's trying to, to go, but no, maybe not desperate, but he, he kind of acted out onto his pressure. And although he came from the side, ah, this is, this is cool, this is impressive, because although he came from the side, look, he brings the tip out to the side because maybe he thought he was gonna get hit on the men, so he was trying maybe to like block uh, the men. But 
he immediately brings the right hand forward straight and he ends up in this position, which is the same position we talked about how at the end of the, the, the Fumikiri, he's engaging the left hand to start bringing the, the Shinai down. He's pulling the trigger at this point and then bringing it down with the Tenochi, doing the snap at the end with the Tenochi. Oh, that's definitely a small man. Look, okay, and this is what we are talking about before, right? Not pulling or pushing with the right arm. Let's let's go frame by frame. Look how he starts. Look at all the all the cuts that he tries to do. So the right arm, it's ex mostly staying extended. And now you're gonna see how he does repeated attacks. Look, one, two, three. Again, all of them being power powered by the left hand. Okay, hold on. Yeah, crazy. Oh, okay. This is a very compact man, right? So even, oh, even it was very compact. I, I didn't see the angle when he was coming in like this, but you see he brought the tip up again and he brought it down. He pulled that trigger right at that same moment to get that. And that sound too. <laughs> oh, that guy. Oh, is that the same Kaishi man that we saw? Don't tell me he's got here. The video repeats. Okay, I think I think the video maybe is looping or something because Yeah, we, we saw that one. So like I, I'm gonna fast forward and, and go. Yeah, I think I think it's looped. Yeah, yeah, these dudes are the same ones. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna stop this one. So that, that was that was all the all the all the men we got. So yeah, I, I think it's very important to understand the use of the left, the right hand, the use of the feet, the timing, the distance. I think it's very important because as you saw, especially for that, that, that attack that is multiple times, multiple attacks, it's so important that we use our wrist, use our tenochi to create that power and add to add to the impact, to add to the power, use the body. And of course, you have to have good follow through in order to get uh, that, that, that good visual effect and that obviously the good power to go through. Because if you, if you hit and stop, I feel like you're already kind of like pulling your punches. So you're not going to get a nice, um, nice attack. It's going to be always like half, halfway. It's, n it's not going to be committed. So I think it all comes together and I feel like I need to make a video as well for, uh, you know, the follow through, Sanshin, Tsutemi, all those, all those things together. But um, it is very important that after the strike, you relax your wrist to be ready for another attack. And you also keep your center in order to go through, keep your hands right there in the center, not bring them down or not bring them up because then you start either you can either lock yourself up or you get yourself out of balance. So ideally you want to make sure that after your strike, you relax your wrist, but your arms are still engaged. At least that's the way I see it. That's the way I do it. Well, I try to do it because obviously it doesn't come up perfect every time, right?